iterative methods are ways of approximating the roots of systems of linear equations. These strategies are longer although little analysis is required. Check how to test if a system can be iterated here in numerical solutions to CE problems. As learned previously, there are direct methods to solve the variables in systems of linear equations. The common methods used are Gaussian elimination and Gauss-Jordan elimination. These two have similar procedures and both would require analysis on how to proceed. There is a third method which is using matrices. On the other hand, approximate methods are worked by iteration with Gauss-Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel. Iterative methods follow a simple algorithm. First, there are two checks to determine if the methods can be adopted in the system of equations. Next, each variable will be assigned an equation, and the iteration starts with assumed initial values. The check for iteration is done in a two-step process. First is the check for the main diagonal dominance. Remember that the main diagonal starts from element 1, 1, which continues to element 2, 2, and ends with element 3, 3. One can jumble the order of equations from here. Then, the next step is again to check for the coefficient of each equation. For the equation of x, the absolute value of the coefficient of x should be greater than or equal to the summation of the absolute values of y and z. The check for the equation of y is also taken as greater than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of z. Then, the absolute value of z should also be greater than or equal to the absolute values of x and y added together. A better way to understand the checks is through examples and here is the first. Check whether the equations negative x plus y plus 7z is equal to negative 6, 4x minus y minus z is equal to 3, and negative 2x plus 6y plus z is equal to 9 can be iterated. The first check is with dominance in the main diagonal. So if we collect all the x's, the second equation will dominate. Thus, the equation used to determine x is 4x minus y minus z is equal to 3. Moving on to coefficients of y, we take the equation with 6y is dominant. And lastly, from the z terms, we take the first equation for z. At this point, the system of equation passed the first check, so we can now have them gauge four coefficients in each equation. With the equation for x, we can try if the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to the absolute values of the other two terms. That is, is the absolute value of 4 greater than or equal to the absolute value of negative 1 plus the absolute value of another negative 1? This is simplified as 4 compared to 1 plus 1 or that is 2. And this is indeed a true statement. Next, for the equation of y. So, is the absolute value of 6 actually greater than or equal to the absolute values of negative 2 and negative 1 added together? And indeed, 6 is greater than or equal to 3. For variable z, we check if the coefficient of z is greater than or equal to the absolute values of negative 1 and positive 1 together. And obviously, it is. Passing the two checks, we can use iterative methods for the system. Here is another example on how to check equations for iteration. Having equations x plus y plus z is equal to 7, 
x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 13 and x plus 3y plus z is equal to 13, we first arrange them to have main diagonal dominance. So focus on the x variables where we have all 1 as their coefficients. So at this point, we can't conclude any arrangements yet. Move to the y variable. And here we can see that 3y is dominant, so its equation will be for y. Then move to variable z. We can take 2z as the dominant term. So x plus 2y plus 2z is equal to 13 is the equation for z. And this leaves x plus y plus z equal to 7 as the equation for x. After arranging the equations, we check each equation. From the equation of x, we can check that the absolute value of 1 should be greater than or equal to the absolute values of positive 1 for both y and z. And it turns out as 1 is greater than or equal to 2, which is false. Next is absolute value of 3, and is this greater than or equal to the absolute values of 1 and another 1? Well, we get 3 is greater than or equal to 2, which is true. Then lastly, the last equation has the check of absolute value of 2 with the absolute values of 1 and 2, resulting to 2 is greater than or equal to 3. Again, this is false. So the system of equations can be iterated. And what does it mean? This means that no matter how long we iterate the equations, the results will not converge, or we will never have an answer which will remain constant.